Hello and welcome to Colred Plays Raid Shadow Legends. I am Colred. Thanks for being here today. In today's video, we take on part two of my ultimate Demon Lord clan boss guide. And part two is all about the mid game. So if you're a mid game player and you're struggling to make progress, we're going to talk about what you can do in the meantime to get the maximum value out of the clan boss team that you already have. And then we're also going to talk about how to plan for the future, how to move forward in a way that makes sense for your account, especially if you're a free-to-play player. So if you're ready, let's get started. Now, one of the trickiest aspects of making any mid-game guide is that everybody defines the mid-game differently. So forget the rest of your account. Forget what's going on in dungeons or in arena. Let's just talk about clan boss for a second. For the purpose of this guide, the early game is defined as putting together that first team and getting the most out of that first team that you can. Maybe it's just your five strongest champions that you start the game with. Maybe it's one or two other champions that help you make a little bit of progress or that you start specializing for clan boss. But until you have all level 60s in your clan boss team and you have them all mastered, you are still in the early game. So the mid game is probably going to occupy that space around brutal difficulty. Most players can get to brutal difficulty relatively early, maybe even while they're still in the early game. But moving past brutal and into nightmare would definitely be a solidly mid game challenge. Once you have moved into nightmare and you start considering ultra nightmare, you are moving out of the mid game, maybe into the late mid game or the early late game portion of the game. I would say until you can at least two key ultra nightmare, you can't call yourself a late game player. And usually it's in fact, maybe the first thing late game players accomplish because there are certainly challenges beyond this, but accomplishing that ultra nightmare team is going to help you gather the resources necessary to progress in other areas of the game. That's why it's so important to start this journey on the right foot right away. Now, this is my brand new account, so I'm only about 20 days into this account, and I'm just going to show you my clan boss team so you know where it stands and you can kind of use it as a reference point. You can see just above my head, Colred MVP, that is this account, and I am at 3.85 million on a single key on normal. Now, normal has a maximum requirement of 3.64 million, so I am one keying normal, just barely, but I am one keying normal. So I would say at this point, I'm out of the very early stages of early game, but this is still clearly an early game account. Only 20 days in, there may be players who are in hard or even brutal. Depends on the champions you pull and how much you're playing, how much you're progressing in your account. But this is definitely an early game, and I'm not very close to the mid game yet. So one of the things that we can talk about is... If you are at this stage, if you are starting to enter the mid game or maybe looking forward to the mid game, what can you do to make the most out of the team that you currently have? And again, this is carry over from that first guide. By the way, if you haven't watched that video, you should go watch that video first because that video is going to give you a lot of information we're going to be referencing here. And so if you've watched that video, then it's going to make more sense when you're watching this video. So the first thing I want to do to maximize my potential in the clan boss is get as many of my clan boss champions to six stars as I can. Now, I want to give a little warning here, just a little caveat, which is you don't want to just six star these five champions. In fact, some of these champions you may already know you want to replace in your clan boss composition. So, for instance, out of these five champions, there's realistically only two that I'm going to be using in clan boss into the mid game and, and approaching the late game. And that is Deacon Armstrong and my starter champion, Athel. Now, Athel is obviously six star. She has this tier six mastery giant slayer, so she's going to be doing a lot of damage. And then I also have Deacon Armstrong, who is a debuffer. He brings a decreased defense. He brings a leech, which is going to help me survive. He has a speed aura and a turn meter fill. So all of those things are beneficial in a clan boss team composition. I don't expect that either one of these will be permanent members of my clan boss team, but that's OK. They're going to help me progress to Nightmare Clan Boss. They're also going to help me in a lot of other places, in dungeons, in Doom Tower, in Arena. Therefore, I can invest in these two champions without any fear 
of wasting my resources. Out of the other three champions that remain, they are simply good champions on my roster, but they are not clan boss specialists. Hyria is actually this rare elf here, and she is a poisoner, so she's bringing the only poisons I currently have. We talked about the value of poisons in the last video. So I, I specifically built her just to get some poisons onto the team. But if I'm trying to advance this clan boss team, I want to think about two things. One is how can I extend the life of my team? We know that's important. And the second is can I get more damage on this team? So I am looking for ways to make these champions more effective or potentially substitute somebody with another champion on my roster. Now, right now, I don't have any other champions on my roster who are going to be significant improvements. And because I'm in the early game, I want to make sure that anybody I start leveling to five stars or six stars is going to be a champion that I get a lot of value out of for a long time. Remember, I'm a free to play player, so I can't simply be six starring a whole bunch of champions for minimal progress. I need every single six star, especially the first eight to ten of them to open up new areas of the game, new difficulties, gather me more resources so I can continue to build my roster. So while you are trying to eke out every last bit of damage and survivability out of this team, you also want to be thinking about the future. And that's true for the entirety of your account, but it's also true for the clan boss composition that you're running. So what I can do is I can look at this team and say, what am I lacking? Well, the first thing that I'm lacking is a really good clan boss damage dealer. I don't have a great poisoner. I don't have a great HP burner. I would rather have a poisoner than an HP burner, but I need a top notch clan boss damage dealer. I don't need an ultra nightmare clan boss damage dealer. I just need a very good one that's going to help me progress into brutal and then into nightmare. The other thing I need here is I need some buffs. I don't have any buffs on this team, really. I could use an increased defense, I could use shields, I could use an ally protect, I could use a strengthen. Anything that is going to sustain me for more turns can also increase my damage. So right now I am looking for a good buffer, and I am also looking for a good poisoner. There is also a third role that I am missing, and that is a cleanser or block debuffer. Remember, we need to deal with that stun somehow, and the best two ways to do it are generally to cleanse the stun after it's landed, or to place a block debuffs buff up before it lands so that it never actually stuns anybody. So I have three roles I am looking for, and you may be looking for some of those roles as well, or you may be looking for different roles. For instance, you may be looking for a turn meter filler or an increase attack champion, or you may be looking for a decrease attack uh, debuffer for the clan boss. That can also extend the life of your team. Champions who fill more than one of these roles are extremely valuable, and often champions are rated primarily in clan boss based on how many roles they fill. So if they're a damage dealer and they just bring a ton of damage, they're going to be rated pretty high for clan boss, or if they fulfill a second or a third role, they're going to be high rated for clan boss. Additionally, for buffers and debuffers, typically they're going to have to bring more than one debuff or more than one buff that's valuable in order to be rated highly for clan boss. So if you are wondering how we plan to go forward from this point, knowing what we lack is one of those steps. It's the first step. We have to figure out what we lack. Now we can keep our eye out for champions that fill the roles that we're missing. How do we know what champions fill those roles? Well, there's several ways, but now we have to do some research. Here I am once again on hellhades.com, um, and this is a great place to do research. There are other websites that you can use. I really like ayumilove.net as well. I use that. I also use Deadwood Jedi's website, and we'll talk more about that in a future video. For right now, let's go ahead and do a simple tier list search here on HH Gaming. So you just go down here to champion tier list. Now, this tier list includes every single champion in the game, but we don't want to have to go through all of those champions. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the filter ability here, and we're going to choose a couple of different filters. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to slide the clan boss filter up to four. We only want very good clan boss champions. I'm actually also going to slide the overall rating to three simply because I'm an early game account. So I want champions who may be versatile enough to play outside of clan boss as well. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose rare and epics. And the reason I'm going to choose rare and epics is because I don't have any legendary books. So even if I picked up a great legendary champion, I might not be able to use them right away. So I'm really looking for a great rare or epic 
damage dealer, debuffer, or buffer. Now, the other thing I can do that here is I can select factions, I can select affinities, types, all sorts of stuff, but I'm just gonna go ahead and filter with these selections first. Now, the list will filter based on overall rating, but I'm most interested in clan boss, so I'm gonna go ahead and select clan boss, and now the list will filter that way. And I can see right away there are a ton of really good epics listed at the top of this list. Deacon Armstrong is listed as a five out of five for clan boss. Now, remember, this is hellhades.com's rating, so you may feel differently about these champions. Also, you may not ex know exactly what is going on with these champions. Why are they so good? So if you're just curious what makes a particular champion good, you can go ahead and click on one. Let's go ahead and choose Whisper here. And now you will get specific ratings in different areas. So you can see that she is rated as a five star in Clan Boss. She's also rated well in Hydra, Doom Tower, Sand Devil, Shogun's Grove, Fire Knight, Dragon. So we have all of these places where she's valuable. 4.5 overall rating. So if you happen to pull Whisper, Hell Hades is saying, this is a very good champion that can be useful in a lot of places, not just in Clan Boss. As you go down, you will get a description about that champion, and then you will see the champion's skills. If you are looking for the champion's stats, that is back up on the picture up here, so they do have the stats, but they're not like searchable in any way. You just have to look at the picture. You can also go back into the game in order to see this picture on your own. Below the abilities or the skill list, we have uh, mastery suggestions. So if you're looking at an unkillable clan boss, uh, this is a recommended mastery setup. Boss killing here is another recommended mastery setup. Um, you have, again, recommendations for blessings, and you also have gear recommendations, including sets and stats you want to focus on. So if we look at Whisper, what makes her so good at clan boss? So let's check out her kit. And this is something you're going to want to do with every highly rated clan boss champion, because you need to learn about the different champions and all those different roles that we're trying to fill. So right away, we can see on her A1, she has a chance. It looks like a 75% chance of landing weakened. Well, we know that Weaken is one of the debuffs that allows us to do more damage. So that's a very important debuff. On the A2, we also have a increased attack buff and increased crit rate on this champion for two turns before attacking if the target has higher max HP than this champion. Every clan boss will. Every single difficulty will have more health than you have. We'll ignore defense if the target is under a Weaken debuff. This is why she is so strong. As you can see, Hell Hades also has a rating or an overall grading for the damage that each skill does. So you can see the multiplier here, 3.8 times attack. And then you can also see the overall grading. Godlike is the highest rating. So Whisper hits very hard on this skill because she ignores defense. Now on the A3, Whisper attacks the enemy two times, and this grants an extra turn if the target is under both decreased defense and weakened. Now, an extra turn mechanic is great because that allows you to get around to that charged assault more frequently. And that basically turns the cooldown from a three turn cooldown down to a two turn cooldown. Um, but you will have to bring somebody else that has a decreased defense because Whisper doesn't bring it. Finally, we have this unrelenting passive has a 10% chance of granting an extra turn whenever this champion lands a critical hit, increases damage inflicted on bosses by 20%. So she's going to do a ton of direct damage. This is one of the few clan boss damage dealers that doesn't rely on poisons and still does an, an amazing job. So you have all of these different parts of the kit contributing to this extra damage, but she also brings a weaken, and that's important because you need that on your team somewhere. Again, to get the maximum value out of her, you want a decreased defense as well. So one of the things we can do is we can go back to the list and look for decreased defense champions. Now, the list here doesn't actually include buffs and debuffs. However, you can search that here at hellhades.com. So if you go back to the main page and just scroll down a little, there are these Raid Shadow Legends quick links. So you just want to click on debuffs, and then you can select the debuff you're looking for. In this case, decreased defense. And then this gives us a list of every decreased defense champion in the game. Now, it will sort them by their rarity status, but also by the way that the skill gets applied. So in this case, it starts with decreased defense of 60%. That's the larger one. That's the one you want. And it has it as an AOE. So these are all AOE decreased defense champions. You can see, again, we have Deacon Armstrong. So if you have Deacon, you're all set with that. But all the way down to rares. 
You can also use a decreased defense on a target. Remember, there's only one target, and that's the clan boss. So all of these champions would also be good for decreased defense in the clan boss fight. Finally, you may have... Oh, there are a lot of them. Finally, you may have a section which is a debuff, and it, it says random. And that just means it's randomly applied. But again, with only one target, random is the same as a single target uh, debuff. So these, cha uh, these champions would also play in the clan boss fight. Now, you can do this quick search for any kind of buff or debuff in the game. So if you are looking for an ally protection or an increased defense, or if you're looking for a poisoner or an HP burner, you can go ahead and choose your buffs or debuffs, select the one you're looking for, and you'll get the full list of all the champions in the game that offer those particular skills. The thing you'll have to do on your own is sort of review the skills and maybe even cross reference which champions offer more than one skill that's needed in the clan boss fight. So I'll give you an example of that. Let's say I was looking for a weakener. I'm going to go to the debuffs and here I have weaken AOEs and I have weakened targets and I want the 25% weaken, but I also don't really want a legendary. I'm looking for maybe uh, an epic who can do the job here. So let's go ahead and pick. So let's go ahead and pick Fane. Now, one of the reasons why I picked Fane is because I saw that she was five star on the clan boss earlier. And so I'm looking at her and I'm saying, OK, so what does she do? And I go to the skills and on the A1, it hits twice and it has a chance of decreasing turn meter. Well, that doesn't play in clan boss, so she must do something on her other abilities. On her A2, she has a 100% chance when booked of placing two poison debuffs. OK, so she's a poisoner and a decrease attack debuff. Well, decrease attack is very valuable. That can help keep you alive if you're using just a traditional composition, right? So if you're not using an unkillable team, you want decrease attack because that's going to reduce the damage that you take. So we've got two things that Fane does right now, poisons and decrease attack. In addition, on her A3, she has a three hitter. The first hit has a 100% chance of placing decreased defense. Great. For three turns on a three turn cooldown, by the way. No, four turn cooldown, it looks like. The second hit has a 100% chance of placing a weakened debuff for three turns on a four turn cooldown. And the third hit heals this champion, so she has some sustain as well. So we have a decreased defense, a weaken, a poison, and a decreased attack all from one champion. So she is covering four of the things that we need in Clan Boss. So she's a damage dealer and a debuffer. Now, that means that you need to build her with accuracy. Remember, she's getting her damage from poison. So all the debuffs need accuracy. And then if you look at her kit, and I know Fane because I've run her on several accounts, her defense is very low, only 727 defense at six stars. So she's going to be tricky to keep alive. But if you have a good team that is built to keep her alive, she can be your primary damage dealer and she's going to provide all of those debuffs that you need with maybe the exception of poison sensitivity, which she doesn't bring on her own. But she basically brings the other three most important debuffs. Poison, weaken, decreased defense. Actually, four. Decreased attack. So she brings four of the five most important debuffs um, all by herself. So she is a one-stop shop for clan boss so if you've happened to pull a fane congratulations you have your ultra nightmare clan boss solution right here now you need to build a team to support her again how do we do that well we go back to the list and now we're going to look for buffs and we're going to look for things like ally protect now here are all the champions that provide ally protection on all allies this is the one you want it should be on all allies and it should be the 50 percent skill preferably there's also a 25% version. But again, you can scroll through here and you can look at this and you can say, oh, hey, look, there is a Taragi the Frog. I have Taragi the Frog or Sandlash Survivor or uh, White Dryad Nia, whoever it happens to be. You can look at them and say, these are champions that I have or these are champions I want to watch out for. Because if I have a Fane and I'm investing in her, I now have a plan. The plan is called Keep Fane Alive. This is always true if you get a great clan boss damage dealer early on. So if you've pulled a Fane, if you have pulled a Farrakhan the Fat, if you have pulled a Venom Mage, if you've pulled any of these champions, maybe um, a Urogrim, 
There are a ton of really good poisoners. There's even a rare poisoner that's extremely good. Her name is Frozen Banshee, and here she is. So you can see Clan Boss five star rating. This is the only five star damage dealer for Clan Boss who is rare. There are some other good rare champions for Clan Boss, but she's the only poisoner who gets the five star rating. And the reason is because on her A1, she has two hits, and each hit has a 100% plan chance of placing the big poison debuff for two turns if the target is under poison sensitivity. Now, she does bring poison sensitivity on her A3, but you want to make sure that you can keep that up 100% of the time. So you either need a debuff extender who can extend the duration of that debuff, or you want to bring a second poison sensitivity uh, debuffer who can renew that periodically. Um, but in order for Frozen Banshee's A1 to land consistently, you're going to need poison sensitivity up. Remember that your debuffers are often affinity champions, like Frozen Banshee here is magic affinity. So if she is going up against the force affinity clan boss, she is going to land her poison sensitivity less, and she's going to land her poisons a lot less. So that is something to consider. Fane, on the other hand, is spirit affinity. So pairing a Fane and a Frozen Banshee could work because not only does Fane bring all those debuffs, but she's a different affinity, which means I will always have some poisons up on the clan boss, regardless of which affinity it is. Now, I'm not saying that's the pair you should go out looking for. There are a lot of different combinations you can use, but this is how you think about creating an effective nightmare and ultra nightmare clan boss team composition. So as I'm looking at my team composition here, I can start to think about what champions could I swap in? What kinds of champions do I need? I've already gone through that. I need some kind of defensive champion. I need some kind of extension to my overall lifespan. So an ally protect champion would be good. An increased defense champion would be good. I also need a top tier damage dealer. So Fane or Frozen Banshee could work really well. As soon as I get one of those champions, I am likely to six star that champion even before I six star Deacon potentially. If I don't get one of those champions, I will six star Deacon instead and maybe even six star Wukong for the arena and I will focus on other places and try to get incremental value out of the team that I already have. I am not going to build a champion who only improves my clan boss team slightly. For instance, I'm not going to take this Hyria to 60. That would be a very desperate move on my part and I would rather wait unless I get all the other pieces and I just need a poisoner, then maybe she's worth a six star because I can continue to use her in faction crypts and Doom Tower secret rooms. But that is a highly unlikely situation that I don't want to opt into unless I am forced to. Now, even though I'm not going to be talking about speed tuning or unkillable clan boss compositions in today's video in any depth, I do want to at least cover the unkillable champions. In order to create an unkillable team composition, you need one of two buffs. You need either a block damage buff or an unkillable buff. And there are only a few champions in the game who supply those two buffs. So let's go ahead and do a quick search for those two buffs so you can become familiar with those champions. So these are the block damage AOE champions in the game. As you can see, there are only eight of them. You do need a block damage for the entire team. It can't simply be a block damage for self. That won't create the unkillable composition. Now, just because a champion has a block damage for the team somewhere in its kit doesn't necessarily mean it's the right kind of block damage skill for the Demon Lord clan boss. I'll give you an example. Mighty Uko, who is a phenomenal champion, is a reviver. When Mighty Uko revives team members, they get an unkillable, I'm sorry, they get a block damage buff. That is not enough to create an unkillable team composition. So out of this list, there are actually only four champions who can help you create an unkillable team with a block damage buff. I'm sorry, make that five. There's one that is a recent addition to this list. So the five are Alsgore, Crimson Horn, Helicath, Roshgard the Tower, Demitha, and Warcaster. Out of those five, four of them can do, do the job on their own. Warcaster cannot. Warcaster needs one of the other champions or a second Warcaster in order to create an unkillable team composition. And the reason is pretty simple. 
If you look at Alsgor, Crimsonhorn, Helicath, or Roshgard the Tower, they all have basically the same skill. As we scroll down, we can see they place a block damage buff on all allies for two turns on a four turn cooldown. That by itself is enough to create an unkillable composition if you put the right champions around them, but you don't need a second unkillable champion, a second block damage or unkillable champion to pair with this. You could, there are compositions that work that way, but in general, we just need one block damage buff for two turns, and that should be enough, depending on how fast we can go or what we can do with the rest of the team. As far as Demitha is concerned, she's a special case, and she's one of the easier champions to get, right? Obviously, she's an epic, and the reason that she can work all on her own is because she has a three-turn cooldown. So she only plays his block damage buff for one turn, but it is on a three turn cooldown. So if you can get her going at a three to one ratio, which takes a lot of speed and some turn meter fill, she can potentially create an unkillable team all on her own. Now, Warcaster only creates a block damage buff for one turn on a four turn cooldown, so that is not good enough. But again, if you have two copies of him, or if you have a copy of Warcaster with any of the other champions, there are speed tunes that allow you to create an unkillable team composition. Now remember, unkillable teams need to be speed tuned. That's why we're going to wait a little bit in terms of the guide to cover unkillable teams, because we need to talk about speed tuning. But I wanted to give you at least a look at these champions and let you know these are the ones that you can keep an eye out for. These are the ones you can keep an eye out for. So don't feed these champions, and if you get one of these champions, you can start moving towards an unkillable composition. Just to complete the set, I want to talk about the unkillable champions. There are actually three. For some reason, this list does not include Emic Trunkheart. He was a new fusion just two months ago, so maybe they haven't gotten around to adding him to this list. But Sir Nicholas, Maneater, and Emic Trunkheart can all also create an unkillable clan boss composition using the unkillable buff, not the block damage buff. In the case of Maneater, he has a five turn cooldown and a two turn duration. So that is a little bit tricky. You will typically need either like a pain keeper to reduce the cooldown on Manny Eater's unkillable buff, or you will need a second unkillable champion. So once you identify one of these amazing clan boss champions, whether it's from an unkillable team composition or not, you want to start investing in that champion. Add it to your current team. Replace the weakest champion in your current team or someone whose role is doubled up on. So for instance, if you have two decrease attacks, you could remove one of those champions. Or if you don't have a really good damage dealer, you can remove a support for a damage dealer, assuming that you can still stay alive long enough to do the damage. Experiment with your team. You may be surprised at which mix of champions does better. Remember that affinity also can change how effective a champion can be. So sometimes you might do better against the force affinity with one team composition, but do better against the spirit affinity with different champions. Continue to level your champions up, get as many six stars as you can, and anybody who is going to stay in the fight long term should have either Giant Slayer or War Master as their tier six mastery. Even if they're a support champion, that's gonna add a lot of damage to the fight. Finally, if you're struggling to find any champions that are worth bringing into the clan boss at all, what I suggest you can do is take a look at Razin Scarhide. Razin Scarhide is a great legendary. He's available to everybody in the game. If you can find these champions, either farm them or pull them from ancient shards, you can fuse Razin Scarhide. Now, Razin Scarhide is going to bring a lot to a clan boss team composition. He is a defensive based champion, so he's going to be relatively survivable. On his A1, he has a chance of removing a buff. So when the affinity clan bosses get their increased attack, he can be part of the solution for removing that buff and extending the life of your team. On his A2, he also has a 100% chance of bringing a decreased defense and a weakened debuff for two turns on a three turn cooldown. So this is a very good debuffer here. Again, remember, you're going to need the accuracy to make sure that this lands. And he is force affinity, so he will weak hit against spirit affinity bosses. His A3 is actually a skill you want to turn off in clan boss. It's a great skill. It's an AOE with a 100% turn meter decrease, but this is primarily used in wave content. Since the clan boss is one target, you can turn off this skill and you'll get more A1s out of him, which are, by the way, three hitters. So you can put Giant Slayer on him 
Um, and also that means you have more chances to remove that buff from the clan boss. So even if you're completely stuck for no good clan boss champions, you have a goal. You can progress towards Raz and Scarhide and he's going to help you out. For those of you who are looking for a really cheap option, again, I want to mention Frozen Banshee. She is a top notch damage dealer. Just make sure that you can get her poison sensitivity on um, as often as possible and for as long as possible, because when that poison sensitivity drops, she will not land her poisons from her A1. But again, this is another champion where you can turn off her A2, just let her use her A1 and A3, and she'll do a lot of damage for you. And in fact, both Razin and Frozen Banshee will take you up to Nightmare and even through Nightmare into Ultra Nightmare. So these are two great champions that are relatively easy to get in this game who you can focus on if nobody else has come down, you know, has come your way based on your pulls. That is it. That is it for the mid game. It is a grind. You have to be patient. Make sure you're investing in the two times shard pull events, whether it's voids or sacreds or ancients, doesn't matter. All you really need is to pull one excellent clan boss champion to start your journey towards nightmare. Don't forget to focus on champions that are all around good champions that you can use in dungeons or in Doom Tower or in arena. In the arena, it'll probably be like debuffers or buffers or at least go second champs. But again, if you're focusing on the right champions and taking them to six stars and getting the mastery, you will find that you will progress from hard into brutal into nightmare without the change of a lot of champions. If you're lucky and you pull a great clan boss champion early, then you can start to build a team composition around that champion. And that's the last thing I want to mention, which is don't bail out on your plan unless you have a much better plan that can replace it. So for instance, if you pull a Fane and you start to build a team around Fane and you're going the killable route, don't change that until you get a really easy unkillable team composition and you're willing to speed tune it. Fane can work in both places, but if you're half a killable team and half an unkillable team, She's not going to do as much damage for you as she would otherwise. OK, well, that is it for me and the mid game clan boss guide. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any mid game tips for your fellow players, please put them in the comments below and I will pin them at the top of the page and share them with everybody. We also have a place for tips in our discord community, so I'll put them there as well. Feel free to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for notifications, and I hope I see you in another video very soon.